Okay, um, yeah, yesterday, or last week, <laughs> um, we stopped with a pretty hard cliffhanger. And, well, we'll continue there. Ah, okay. Well, uh, I have no idea what to choose, um, but I, I don't know. Should we stay with Himitsu and Kioske, or should we go after Catherine or Katya? Damn, that's a pretty tough choice. I think we should run after Catherine. But but she left us. She left us back there and didn't say anything. Why should I run after her? No, no, we don't do anything. Oh, it's a plus for Himitsu, but yeah, not so good with Catherine. <clears throat> How much longer was I going to allow this to continue? The reason we cut any uh, away rotting flesh is to prevent disease from spreading across the rest of body. Since we were in the same class now, I was bound to find out where she came back sooner or later. Oh yeah, that's another good reason not to follow her now. <laughs> yes, I remember everything and hello Mr. Likin for watching. I replied with confidence, stood up, took Himitsu by the hand and made my way for the exit. Wait, what about... I turned and gave Kioske a glare so furious that he shut up immediately. <laughs> Wie kommt's? <laughs> Anger, resentment and sadness were all stirring with me. As we walked through the hallways, I paid no attention to the people around me. I only stopped once we got to the shoe lockers. I looked out across the schoolyard. What if she was still here? Nikokun? Himitsu said sheepishly. Yes? I snarled while turning around and noticed that I was still holding her by the hand. Oh, sorry. I let her go. Did something happen? And don't say no, I can see that something's wrong. Kyosuke san also looked agitated. <coughs> san is a Japanese honorific, expresses respect used towards those older, higher in status, or esteemed by the speaker. <coughs> At the info box. Kyosuke? I grinned. The only thing that can agitate him are anime heroines with unrealistic proportions. But Himitsu continued staring at me with her big eyes. I mean, he was talking about some anime series, the one with the magical girls. It airs at 6 o'clock, you've probably seen it. Why was I lying to her? Why was I lying right now? I couldn't hide Catherine from her forever, maybe for today, but come tomorrow she would bump into her in school. Or worse yet, Catherine would visit Himitsu's place herself. They did know one another after all. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's go. Uh, let's go to that store of yours. You said it was at the station, right? Luckily, it wasn't in Himitsu's nature to continue the interrogation. Interrogation. <clears throat> oh, the animated backgrounds again. I love them. <clears throat> So today in class the teacher asked Raycoon when did man first land on the moon and she replied in 2079. Can you believe that? Mm hmm. And then in Fizet, Mitsu carried on as if nothing had happened. Maybe as far as she was concerned nothing did happen. From the outside the shop looked fairly average. Maybe it was attracting school girls with affordable prices. Himitsu wasn't from the wealthiest family by our school standards, but her father worked in the government sector, so they weren't exactly imper impoverished either. We entered the store. Himitsu tried one closing item on after another. 
What do you think? It's all right. What about this? I think this color will be f uh, will be in fashion this winter. It's all right. What about this dress? Notes of discontent began showing in her voice. I think the previous one was better. As if even I know which one the previous one was. I wasn't really in the mood for a fashion show. In my opinion, he needs to look good in anything. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, what was all of this for? Didn't she have enough stuff already? I mean, honestly, what was it for? I've known her for a long time now, yet it didn't recall her ever having a close relationship with anyone. She was no longer a child, but a girl in the prime of her life. It was long past the time for her to find a boyfriend. Wait, was I really feeling jealous? No, of course not. After all, if she did find someone, I would have been the first one to find out. I think the most important thing is that you like it. But I like a lot of them, this one and this one, but on that one. Mitsu was shifting the clothes back and forth. Did she really deserve such treatment? Catherine is back. I said as if in passing. What? It seemed she genuinely didn't understand me. She arrived in our class right before the last lesson. Apparently we'll be studying together from now on. Really? Himitsu suddenly became gloomy and dropped the dress uh, that she liked so much. I see, you're not too happy about that. I I'm happy, I just thought that she left forever. I thought so too. What is she planning to do now? What do you mean? I mean, Himitsu hurriedly began putting all the clothes back on their spots. She's been gone for so long and you're already seniors. I wasn't too interested in her life's plans, to be honest. I mean, we haven't even spoken yet. What about you? Are you glad, Nikokun? She asked smoothly. It's not that simple for me, uh, but what is there to be happy about? You know very well what happened a year and a half ago. Yeah. But it's all water under the, under the bridge now, we'll see what happens, she probably has her reasons for coming back. At the very least I was no longer lying to Himitsu. I wasn't being completely open, but uh, what was the point in pouring my hurt out to her? Ultimately it was my private affair. Mine and Catherine's. Aren't you going to buy something? She stopped to think for a moment. No, everything here is expensive and I don't have much left from this month's allowance. But it's only the seventh! I exclaimed. Well, let me buy your present then. What about that white and yellow dress that looked good on you? It doesn't look good on me at all! Imitsu objected unexpectedly. I look fat in it! You? Fat? I laughed out loud, drawing the apprehensive looks of clerks and the other shoppers. See, this is why I didn't want to go. I whispered. <coughs> Whisper. Whisper voice. <coughs> Himitsu didn't reply but merrily smiled. We walked most of the way home in silence. I was getting uneasy. Now would have been a great time for those stories about Raycoon or about Saya-chan who couldn't send the ball over the volleyball net. Don't let Katya get to you. I'm fine. I can clearly see that you're not. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Enough time has passed. The important thing is that you yourself believe that. I do believe it. It's just that it's all a bit, uh, a bit unexpected. But you know how she is. She comes without being invited and leaves without saying goodbye, always only thinking about herself. I couldn't help but smile, Himitsu noticed and got even sadder. Thankfully we've just arrived home. Anyway, I'm off. See you tomorrow? See you. I wanted to add something else, but instead I merrily watched her walking toward her place.
I spent the rest of the day trying to in, in vain to stop thinking about Catherine. No, it was going to drive me insane. The phone rang every five minutes. I didn't pick up because I knew it was Kioske. There aren't many others who'd be calling me, and if it really was that raging otaku, well, at least he wasn't banging out, uh, on the door. I ended up simply unplugging the phone. TV and video games didn't distract me for long before I've had enough of them. I even tried doing some schoolwork, something I don't do very often. I played a little bass. I made a simple, uh, simple supper. I would have, of course, preferred eating something Himitsu had made. But it seemed she was busy today. It wasn't that she absolutely had to make me both breakfast and supper every day. I simply got used to it. Now that I thought about it, habits have become an integral part of my life. You could even say they've assumed a leading role. And Catherine's sudden appearance threatened to ruin everything. It's as, it's as if I grew sen uh, senile, flabby in the past one and a half years. To the point that all I cared about was the status quo. On the other hand, why would I want something to disturb my life when I couldn't possibly lead anywhere good? The doorbell rang suddenly. It was probably Himitsu, but at this hour? I slowly made my way towards the door, however, a, th a thought crossed my mind on the way. Why would Himitsu be ringing the bell in the first place? So it had to be Kioske. Oh, I see the turn. It's Catherine. Alright, it's definitely way too late for him. That Fatso's daily routine consisted solely of sleeping and anime. Wait, why was I even making a fuss over this? However, there was nobody on the doorstep. I looked around and walked outside, but the street was empty. Stupid pranksters. But someone had definitely been here. On the way back, I noticed a note on the door. Nikolai son, be careful. You are in great danger. You are being hunted by a very powerful people linked to your father. This is neither a joke nor a hoax. Uh oh, right. And upon entering my house, I would surely find a busty magical girl in the living room, ready to carry me out my ver my every comment. Kioske! I shouted. This isn't funny anymore! And why would he involve my father? My, my parents? The accident at the, at the plant a year ago. They fled the Soviet Union when I was seven. In Japan they worked as simple engineers in Kobayashi Corporation. After the death, I had the chance to return to the USSR, but since at that point I had spent most of my life in Japan, I decided to stay. My father's friends helped with the legal formalities, and his bank account prevented me from starving. Kioske! I called with less confidence. But the only answer I got back was a rant from the neighbor about how it's night time and I'm causing a ruckus. But, it wasn't, but if it wasn't Kioske... Then who? If it was a joke, then its creators have failed to achieve their goal, being funny. What if this was all much more straightforward and this was the real deal? I fiddled with a note. It was a normal, careful, torn notebook sheet. It was written in Japanese, with good handwriting, although the spelling left something to be desired. Why would they even write by hand? Wouldn't it have been easier to print it out, or to make it out of newspaper chippings, like those cheesy detective uh, shows? In any case, I've ruled out Kioske. I would have instantly recognized his handwriting. You're in great danger. Linked to your father. What if it was those brats? Having loaded parents isn't a guarantee that you're going to master the Japanese language. Maybe Ellie Summer's servants decided to get revenge for this morning's incident. No, that was just silly. Who could possibly care about a simple Japanese student like me anyway? And why now? Right after Catherine came back. 
To be honest, I didn't remember how good her Japanese was, nor did I remember her handwriting, but she had been in Japan for a significantly less time than me. Catherine had been a normal student, she hadn't been getting in straight A's, and after a year and a half without practice... Hmm, at the very least I could certainly say that she was a prime suspect. The question of why didn't even enter my mind. I've stopped questioning her motives a long time ago. And... Hello, Sayachi. Either way, I was going to have to try to get some answers at school tomorrow. But for now, sleep. It's been a while since I've had such a tiring day. Yet sleep would not come. I kept tossing and turning and eventually became angry with myself over being unable to fall asleep. Meanwhile, the hands of the clock slipped past midnight. A quiet ring. I flinched and perked up my ears. Maybe I've imagined it? Seriously? Again? I leaped up and scanned the room for something to use in self-defense. My best was out of the question. I approached the door of st on stiff legs and asked in a uh, trembling voice, Who is it? Nikokun. I let out a sigh of relief and opened the door. Do you know what time it is? Sorry, but your phone wasn't working. So, that's no reason to come here in the middle of the night. I know, but I called several times. I wanted to know if you'll go to school tomorrow. <laughs> if you're so worried about my attendance, then you shouldn't be waking me up in the middle of the night. Sorry. I suddenly felt uncomfortable. After all, this was normal for Himitsu and yet I started venting all my problems by lashing out at her. She didn't bring Catherine back to Japan, nor did she write that note. <sighs> no, I'm the one who should be sorry. It's just that today was an awful day. I mean, it was pretty difficult. Pretty intense. Also, I was already sleeping. Or at least trying to. Then I'll let you be. Good night. I closed the door after her and went back to bed. If today had been a difficult day, then what was tomorrow going to be? 